Hi everyone, so in this part we're gonna try to make um, this kind of muzzle flash which I think it's a, it's a very stylized, there's a bunch of shapes and having control with the sliders on how many for example those shapes you would like to see in your muzzle flash is always handy um, so we're gonna attempt to uh, create uh, that kind of system for um, those muzzle flashes also we're gonna explore a little bit different shape which is this one which essentially I'm adding just a additional splash or shapes as you can see here and obviously uh, again we're gonna have a slider for those as well uh, I think it might be a little bit uh, long tutorial so I'm probably gonna split those into two uh, videos uh, but let's see how it goes okay so I'm in the substance now so what I'm gonna do I want to start with shape and I want a rectangular uh, shape maybe something like this I'm gonna use drop site next not transformation, trapezoid, trapezoid, transform grayscale. And I just want to stretch the top of it. I'm going to disable the tiling as well. Next, I'm going to use a transformation because I actually want to rotate this. And I want to scale it down a little bit as well. So I'm holding um, shift and alt while trying to scale it down to maintain the aspect ratio. Okay, I want to create a system for tile sampler, so I'm going to run it through bevel. Something like this. And I'm just going to plug this into tile sampler. as a, a mask map input and I'm gonna blend this with the, with our texture using the subtract mode on the blend mode okay and in here I'm just gonna change the pattern to use disk reduce the amount to maybe let's say 10 and 6 or actually revert, so 6 and 10. I'm gonna scroll down and look for mask map threshold. I'm gonna invert it and now I'm just gonna change the settings for the position random and maybe offset as well. Scale. I'm looking for very spiky shape here. So I'm just going to use a lot of randomization here just to get the really nice spike. I'm going to scroll down now to the position random and just try to find an interesting shape using those settings. So I think this kind of works. It seems like a, it's a, it might be a really good candidate for the uh, muzzle flash. So I'm just going to use this and run it through transform because I need to scale this down a little bit because the next node I'm going to use will be slope. Slope blur grayscale. I'm just going to bring a simple shape. And this soft circle low on samples maybe just two and we're getting this nice uh, outline of it okay the next thing would be I actually want to create like additional details like additional spikes so I'm gonna use uh, this shape I'm gonna run it through splatter circular I'm gonna plug it into pattern input one uh, pattern change to image input and now I need to rotate it. And so I'm gonna scroll down where the rotation is. It's right here, put it on 90 degrees. Scale it up. And I need to increase my pattern amount. And maybe I'll go even with, uh, let's go with 50. And now let's try to uh, randomize. I'm gonna 
put the symmetry random to one. However, I only want to uh, symmetry the vertical. So they're essentially gonna be flipped uh, every now and then. Okay. Spread to two maybe. And now let's try to uh, change the size of it. And obviously randomize it quite a bit. And we get something like this. You can see we got like we kind of getting those really cool shapes here, and it feels quite random. I think so. I'm just going to increase the radius and play with those uh, random uh, values random scale maybe as well to get even more randomization okay so now I only need portion of it so I'm gonna do I'm just gonna bring shape and I'm gonna design a mask for myself something like this run it through a polar grayscale and maybe blur it just a little bit in case I need it for the blur, I'm gonna try to disable tiling in this node. Okay, seems like it's working, that's cool. And now, for example, this will be our mask, right? So you can select the shape, and with this, you can control how much of a cone you actually want. So let's blend it, and set the blending mode to multiply. Obviously, blur might be a little bit too much in this case, so maybe just slight blur. And we're kind of getting uh, this. So let's try to add to our shape now. So I'm gonna blend it with uh, our shape. In reverse, so I can control the opacity. Set it to add. And obviously we need to move it. So before we plug it in, I'm gonna run it to the transformation node and just move it somewhere around here. And now I can go back actually to um, the splatter circular and I can tweak the settings while previewing what's, um, what's going on in the main texture. So uh, we probably want to increase the radius. Or maybe we can even scale it down using this transformation node just a little bit. I'm not worrying about this bit because we'll be uh, subtracting quite a lot from uh, this place. So I'm only worrying about how it looks here. Uh, I probably want to increase the amount of patterns because I want a bit more of those, of those spikes. Right, so I think this could work. And now maybe let's get rid of uh, the bit from here. So I'm gonna blend it. I'm gonna use shape. Disk and I wanna run it through transformation node. And now I can just double click on the blend, click once on the transformation and just move it with disabled tiling mode. And I want to put subtract here. Okay, so I'm, you know, fairly easy just getting rid of the end of uh, that texture. And we only, uh, only got this now. The next bit I want to add is the core, so let me run it through a bevel on the lower distance. Next will be histogram scan because I only need a portion of it. Something like this. I want to blur it or even just have a control for the blur just in case I need it and transformation in case I have to uh, move it around so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna create a blend node and our main shape actually needs to go to the top and the core will go to the second input because now I'm gonna just add here and control the opacity you can see what's happening I'm kind of having this uh, control over the temperature so for example I want 
the color to be glowing white and uh, the rest of the shape needs to be uh, orange and then uh, it goes to the red as well okay uh, let me see if i can actually tweak this uh, mid gray uh, values okay and i think it's in the slow blur maybe so i'm going to increase it to the maximum before it clips here so i get a little bit more data here and now i can just position better with the transformation node to be around uh, here okay i want to get rid of some of data here as well to create a bit more random shape so what i'm going to do i'm just going to blend it with the shape you already have which is this one however i need to run it through transformation and i'm going to use subtract and move this somewhere maybe here although i'm going to disable the tiling on it and maybe scale it up it's a little bit too much That could work, but I'm really not happy with those results. So what I'm going to do, actually, I'm just going to copy this butter circular here and I'm going to adjust some settings. I need to run it to transform as well so I can preview what I'm actually doing. I need to disable tiling. Yep. Right, and now I can go to this circular splatter and actually start increasing the size. maybe something like uh, this so having uh, additional control I think it helps a little bit I think this looks uh, a little bit better now I think those spikes goes a little bit too far I wonder maybe if it can either increase their size maybe shrink them down a bit so I'm just gonna go back to our circular splatter and try to tweak the size a bit right so I think that might look a little bit better bear in mind we'll probably at the end go back to through those settings and adjust it to um, to our needs but I think so far um, it's not too bad right so I'm gonna cut video here and we're gonna continue with this shape in the next video thanks for watching